Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at the blue sheep. Finally, we've got the blue sheep in our hands. The, uh, possibly the penultimate H6 uh, variant, the blue sheep. Uh, we've looked at a couple other ones. We've looked at the H6S1, which is the little brother to one of the, well, yeah, the little brother to the blue sheep. Uh, there are some other H6 knives that are basically the same size, but this guy's a little bit smaller, and he's a frame lock. Very nice. We looked at the H6 Free a couple days ago, and that's the one that's got a nail nick to open it up, so that's a two-hand opening. And it's got a really cool blade shape that you can also get with thumb studs, and then it's called the Elegance. Today, this blue sheep is what we're looking at, and uh, I am quite excited about it. I'm really looking forward to this last video in this series. So stick around, it's coming at you right now. Let me just do a tiny bit of a refresher right here. The H6S1 is, you know, we'll line up the uh, pivot pin right here, straight across there, is clearly the smaller brother to the other H6 knives. And I just wanted to let you know that roughly that size of knife and it fits a guy with, you know, big hands quite well. My hands aren't, you know, in the extra large range, but they're right next to it. So that's a good size knife. This knife, the H6 Blue Sheep, uh, fits uh, larger hands. Extra large hands, no problem. There's room for another finger right there. So if you've got six fingers or just extra large hands, you can fit in there quite well. So reverse grip, you know, still bigger hand can fit in there. We've got the 14C 28 end steel that's in, you know, the other H6 series, which is, I think, a really good choice. For the price range that you're paying for this knife, there's very few knives that you can get that are this price with this steel. Just say it. Uh, so you are getting a good deal. Um, Liang Gang Design, as uh, so are all the H6 knives. This one's got a pocket clip tip up, tip down on right side, and there's nothing on the G10 on this side. But there are holes in the liner that are threaded. So if you've got the equipment to put uh, a little bit of holes through the G10 and you can handle that equipment precisely enough, you could make yourself the option of putting your pocket clip on this side, but Unless you're really skilled, you won't be able to mill out the section to have the uh, pocket clip sit down in there. It would probably sit proud of the G10. Um, you know, so you have to have quite the skills. I really wish they would sell a handle scale option, just a handle scale, to fit that. Since there's holes there already, a left-hander's handle scale would be a great thing for real steel to sell. If you're asking me, <laughs> since it's on the liner already, really good idea if you guys go for it, uh, real steel. Maybe you've already been thinking about it, which is why you put those holes in there. I don't know. Uh, like the other H6 knives, you've got a stainless steel tube there for your lanyard hole, which is nice. Full back spacer. It's a uh, milled G10, CNC milled. So it's got a nice bit of traction on it right all the way along. So very good to get a nice solid grip on this knife. There's a thumb riser on the blade with some jimping. So all that stuff together creates a very solid grip on this knife. And then this nice choil at the front and the one for your pinky finger at the back give a whole lot of security for this. Now, I haven't mentioned this yet. The H6 is in the H series of knives. Have you, have you ever noticed that Real Steel's got H knives? They've got knives that start with the letter T. They got knives that start with the letter S. The H series is Hunters. So they've really targeted this knife to be a knife that is a knife uh, that's good enough for Hunters to use. Now, there's a couple things that are really good about this being a Hunters knife. One, you've got washers. Uh, washers are a whole lot easier to clean animal blood out of than ball bearings are. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, and the washers, you know, are very smooth. The action's great. You can flip the knife open, give it a little shake and it closes. It opens very easily, very well. Uh, no blade play up and down, back and forth, side to side, nothing like that. And 
lockup is totally solid and the alignment is perfect. It's got washers, really, really nice washers. You've got, uh, I think they're Teflon washers on either side and very thin phosphor bronze washers on either side right next to the steel of the blade. And that's what gives this thing that really good action, that washer system that they're using. Handle is basically this style, but you can get it with uh, a number of different G10 colors and you can get it uh, grooved. So it's that lines grooved into it for even better grip, but mostly it comes with this flat slab and uh, just simply uh, chamfering the edges and putting the jimping on the back spacer um, and the way they make it there, you can get a very solid grip on this. You're going to be very happy to have a knife like this in your hand when you need it to cut uh, some critter apart to do some, some butchery kind of work. Nice belly for that kind of work and a flat section. Sharpness choils out of the way. That's really nice. Uh, if you do have to get your thumb over top, it's still got some wider steel for part of it there for getting your thumb on. The thumb studs work wonderfully. They're a good size and well made. And, um, you know, the pocket clip tip up or tip down has the same amount of knife uh, being exposed either way. Well, a little bit less in the tip down orientation than it is in the tip up orientation. Now, let me just demonstrate that quickly before I move on. You know, it just slides right in and it's all the way on your pocket. And this look is quite nice. It just sort of blends in. The thing is, you can get this knife in so many different color combinations. Uh, you don't have to have camo for it to hide well in your clothing. <laughs> you know, but if you want a bright viz, you can get a really bright orange or a really bright blue. Uh, you know, all kinds of different ways of getting this knife. You have three different blade options. This here is a saber grind version or high flat. So about two thirds of the blade is a flat grind going up. You've got a drop point here with a nice swedge. You can get this very same blade shape, but with a hollow grind in here. You can get this very same blade shape, except for it's a full flat grind. Then you can get it with stone wash. You can get it with a satin. You can get it with a black stone wash. You can get it with a black coating. So four different colors or su surface options and three different grind options for this knife. There's something that you like here. You know, if you're not limited by the size, you know, this is around a three and a half inch cutting edge. If you can have a knife that size, you can have a knife with, with you know, all the three basic blade styles that you might want and all the color coatings that you want to. Very, very good options. So before I do the measurements, let's show you the pictures of the inside of this knife. So here it is taken apart. So no real skeletonizing on this back plate. Uh, steel ball bearing right there. Like this extra jimping here to make it easy to open the knife. And as you see the D-shaped hole right here, that's so that pivot pin can't spin. Here's the back spacer, nice G10 material, and it's held in place with pins and screws. And here's the uh, other side, some nice skeletonizing there, but obviously they could have done more. They could have got this thing under five ounces without much work, but I don't mind I, anyways. And here's that phosphor bronze washer there and this Teflon or a nylon, probably Teflon type washer here. And so you get both on each side of the, uh, pick up. you get both on each side of the blade. Let's see on this side here, there they are again. There's the Teflon one and the phosphor bronze one right there. So that's what makes for this awesome action. You can see the tiny little holes in those little thin washers. They are just phenomenally good. So they just, work very, very well. Now notice one other thing. Here's one of those pins with the D shape on it. So that keeps it from spinning freely. On here, 
on this main screw for the pivot, there's a little tiny washer on there. Soft silicone. And you can use that as they designed it instead of putting in thread locking liquid. And when you tighten the knife up to whatever pivot strength you want, it will stay there. It won't back off because of that nice soft Teflon, uh, or sorry, that nice soft uh, silicone type washer keeps it from backing out. If you ever lose that washer, yeah, go ahead and use something like VC3, some really, the weakest thread locker you can find, the weakest thread locking liquid. Uh, usually you can find the purple stuff, that's the weakest stuff, but there's this product called VC3 by Vibratite that's even better because it's got an anti-vibration component to that liquid. You can reuse the same screw with the same uh, liquid on there, you know, six, seven times, and then you before you have to reapply it. And it stops the screws from backing out, but still makes them possible to remove and change. So zooming back in, there you go. That's the main thing. Of course, I left some screws upstairs, but here's that solid stop pin. It's one piece of steel, full four millimeters, or is it three and a half all the way through? I think it's four millimeters all the way through. I'll put the actual size on the screen, but nice knife. That skeletonizing helped a little bit. I wish they could have done just a little bit more. Here's the weight. 145 grams, 5.1 ounces. Not too much for me. I don't mind 5.1 ounces for a three and a half inch blade on a knife that's almost eight and a half inches total. No problem at all. The cutting edge is nine centimeters, 3.54 inches. The blade length, so the tip to the closest point on the G10 is 9.1 centimeters, 3.58 inches. The uh, blade thickness right here uh, on either side of the thumb stud is 3.5 millimeters. That's 0.1378 inches. The blade depth is three centimeters. That's 1.18 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.58 millimeters on this specific example. That's 0 0.0228. So not bad. Might be a little bit thicker than I like, but it's three and a half inches. So really I don't mind at all. The grind angle is 21.1 degrees on this side and 19.0 degrees on this side. So whoever did the sharpening on this knife did a very good job. You know, of course, when I resharpen it, it's going to be 20 degrees per side, but that's pretty close to that right now. And they did a good job sharpening it. It's fairly sharp. It cuts quite well. Um, now to the handle. The handle length is 12.1 centimeters, 4.76 inches. The grip area on the inside here is like 9.7 centimeters. That's 3.82 inches. The handle thickness, not counting a pocket clip, is 1.4 centimeters. That's 0.55 of an inch. And the handle depth is 2.9 centimeters. That's 1.14 inches. And the knife depth, when it's in your pocket, right here, it's at the widest point, is 3.6 centimeters, 1.42 inches. So not even one and a half inches. And the total length of this knife with the blade deployed is 21.2 centimeters, which is 8.36 inches. So eight and a third inches and really, really good hand feel. Solid, solid knife. Um, I like it very, very much. Um, I had the H6S1 a couple years, almost two years ago. And, you know, I liked it and everything. It's comfortable. It's nice and small. But I wouldn't have really called this a hunting knife, although it's in the H6 series, so the hunting series. I would have called this an excellent EDC. This I would consider a good hunting knife. Uh, it's it's just got so many good qualities. Notice that the uh, screw heads are just flat on this side. They're all designed not to spin freely, even the ones back here. So you only need to screw them on the one side. Very nice. Most body screws on most knives, you have to you know do on both sides at the same time, and it's kind of nasty sometimes. So no problem there. You know, it's a solid, solid knife. How much is this costing? Well, on Amazon, most of these prices are Amazon. Amazon, you can get this knife between $46 and $58. Um, that's on Amazon.com. There's different prices because of the different variations, you know, the different blade, the different handle scales, the, you know, all that stuff. 
In Canada on Amazon, it's just under $70, $69.11. You can get one, and of course, some of them are higher priced. The Amazon links that I have below, those give me a little bit of a referral credit uh, that I use, and that really does help keep this channel moving. Okay, before I go to the next thing, I want to talk about the Real Steel Knives fan book page on Facebook. Yes, there is such a thing. Actually, I started it. So, but I'm making it sort of independent. A Real Steel fan book page. If you like Real Steel Knives, please go over to the Real Steel fan book page and sign up to be a fan there and contribute and talk and stuff. And, um, you know, it's a good place to get together with other people who like Real Steel Knives. So let your friends know, let your... You know, anybody you know that likes Real Steel Knives, let them know about the Real Steel fan book page on Facebook. I know a lot of you guys don't use Facebook, so, you know, that's fine. But if you use Facebook, consider that. Now, let's summarize. We've got a knife that has three different blade styles in four different blade finishes. We've got uh, two different handle styles, you know, flat G10 or grooved. Uh, sometimes you can find carbon fiber. <laughs> Um, I think in the H6 even, yeah, you can find some carbon fiber handle scales. Uh, so loads and loads of options. Um, great action. The, the bearings, the washers, I should say, act like bearings. It's very smooth. Great action on here. And I haven't taken this apart or lubricated it yet. I just told you I was going to show you the pictures of the inside. I'll, I'll record that later on. Because it's just such a beautiful knife. Um, Tip up, tip down on the right side, which is quite good. Hopefully they'll give us something for the left side for those people that want it. But I understand why they don't, because it's got such a beautiful finish here. Somebody who's right-handed doesn't necessarily want, you know, a little hole here for your uh, thumb, uh, for your pocket clip. And, you know, since the vast majority of people are right-handed, I can see why they do it for financial reasons. But come on, guys, please be nice to us lefties even though I'm ambidextrous, but there's a lot of lefties who just, they're lefty only by a long shot. Um, so tip up, tip down, all those different options. Do I have cons for this knife? I can't find any cons. Nothing that's anything substantial at all. I can't even find nitpicky cons on this thing. Um, because they give you every option you want. And, you know, if you're in the market for a knife that's around three and a half inches and uh, you're probably going to use it for hunting. It works very, very well as an EDC choice as well. Um, yeah. And you can get your blade. Wow. I'm just going over the same stuff. The blade style you can get, the blade shape and everything. Yeah. I think I should just let it go here. I've done three different H6 videos this week. I'll put links to the other ones right at the very end of the video, right up here in either corner. So you can click on those to watch some more H6 videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks especially to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Uh, tonight I'm doing the draw for the winner of the uh, knife, that uh, the Patreon winner of the knife for the uh, October drawing. I, I do the October drawing at the beginning of November. That's just, for those people who aren't aware, that's how I'm doing it. So uh, pay attention to the upcoming videos where I'll announce who the winner is from my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, click down below. I've got a link up or just go patreon.com slash CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge. And you can join up and uh, become a well-desired and appreciated supporter of this channel. Uh, I honestly can say this channel would not be as good as it is if it wasn't for my Patreon supporters. Remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>